so yeah, this is this is something I, as I said before, I'm really passionate about. And what I love, especially with us working together, and one thing I love to to bring to you as well is. Uh, so when you start looking at people within the team and start looking at personality, in the first video, we talked a lot about diversity, inclusion, and culture. So mm -hmm. how do would you apply culture differences and how does it relate to the topic that we're talking about today? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question because there is, there is an, is a connection between those two topics obviously mm -hmm. um, and, and actually we'll get, get to that later as well because that's actually a question we get asked, right? What's the difference mm -hmm. between personality types and, and cultural differences? On my side, I work more on the, on the cultural differences mm -hmm. and so I I do a few steps with my clients, which are really important to gain that, that flexibility and to be able to be really skilled at intercultural communication and work. What yeah. I mean by that is, as a coach, I know that you can only uh, control 100% what you do. Yeah. You know what your, what your um, Chinese partner company does or, yes. or uh, your French colleague you don't control it. You, you can try mm -hmm. to influence it, but you control what you do. So you need to get that flexibility. Is, is, yeah, and that, I that, love that. that. <laughs> realization yeah. because yeah. That's, that shows you why it's worth doing that effort. And now yeah. the tool I use to no, do one, just one point on that. Cause I, I definitely love what you said. Cause I, I do get that a lot when people come to me or so, especially when you start talking about organization and the different mm -hmm. energy in the team and, or whenever they start talking about conflicts and I mean, neg negative conflicts and they says, Oh, well, they are always like this and they're always like that. And I always ask them, okay, so, what can you do to adapt to the situation? And people yes. are like, oh, well, you know, this is the way I am. <laughs> or especially if they are the people who are causing the conflict and they are not mm -hmm. aware of that. They says, well, this is how I am. When I'm angry, yes. I have to shout. I'm like, this is how you are or this is how you choose to be. Yeah. I think that people sometimes forget that there is a choice and that yes. you can adapt your behavior. Yes. So yes. I love what you said about, yeah. <laughs> and that's where this work on either the, our cultural orientation or our personality type is quite similar because what we do is we say, okay, okay, let's take it for granted that you are like this yeah. or you choose to be like this, yeah. but you can also choose to, you know, accommodate those other course, profiles. Yeah. Mm. And you can choose to move towards them and actually to be successful in an intercultural situation, mm. you need to. <laughs> yeah. There's a way of, of, of talking around it. You need yeah. to gain that flexibility and be able to shift perspectives and really yes. convince yourself that the other perspective is not all wrong. Yeah, so, um, just to give um, our viewers a, a bit more of, of a concrete example of what these cultural dimensions are. Basically, if you if you ask yourself the question of, well, what is a culture? <laughs> <laughs> Obviously there has been a lot of research done around this mm. and um, famous sociologists like Kurt Hofstede or Trompenars mm. have um, found cultural dimensions, which are, if you want to just use normal terms, different aspects mm. of any given culture. And if mm. you analyze those aspects, you can suddenly uh, compare the German culture with the British culture, for yeah. example, or any culture you want to take. So what I use when I do this work with my clients is called the Cultural Orientations Framework. And it was designed by Philip Rosinski, who is uh, one of the forefathers of intercultural coaching here in Europe. He's done this for 40 years or so. Um, and his framework is really good because it's a adapted to the workplace. It's specifically designed to train and coach um, in intercultural workplaces. Mm -hmm. And it breaks down culture into 17 different cultural aspects. Oh, so yeah. that's obviously a lot and I'm not going to cover this here. I'm just going yeah. to, um, as an example, introduce you to two, just so you can mm -hmm. see what's the value of this and what, what mm -hmm. the actual work is that gets done. So if we take the cultural aspect of communication, we have different patterns in our communication, right? Mm -hmm. Just like um, Naili also explained in the first video of what happened um, between the Span Spanish people and the British colleagues um, communicating. Mm. So one aspect of communication is the level of directness. So if you imagine yes. it like a line and 
Here you have your direct <laughs> communicators and at the other end, opposite end of the spectrum, you have the indirect communicators. Um, they will say their statements in very different fashions. For example, mm -hmm. in a work setting, one, the direct one might say, um, this report is bullshit, do it again. Okay, that's, <laughs> yes. that's even a bit mean. They might just say it a, a bit more neutral and say, okay, this needs to be done again, please. Yeah. Um, that's still quite direct. On the indirect spectrum, for the same message, the person might say something along the lines as, oh, thank you so much for handing in your report. Um, I think it is not quite ready yet. Maybe you would want to review section two. Just yeah. me. You know, if you feel like it. Um, so they tone down the level of directness a lot. And when somebody comes from a direct culture, they might not even get the hint. They might just say, well, said maybe, and I, I don't want to. So I'm just going to hand this in as my final version. Um, whereas somebody from the same context will get the message very clearly. This is not okay. I need to re review my, my section two. And that's, a, that's quite important because that's usually the cause of conflict between team members or when working it is, it is uh, with external source. partners, right? It's just yes. It when is. you use the indirect communication, you are trying to be polite and you mm -hmm. use words like maybe and possibly if you don't mind. But then yeah. you don't actually go back to the rules of delegation. So you don't specify when you need it done. You don't specify exactly what needs to be done. No. It's a bit like, oh, but it's, I didn't think that was as serious yeah. as you thought you were. It, it leaves the indirect communicator leaves a lot of uh, room for interpretation. Yeah. And so it works very well with people who are also like this and exactly. from also this culture. And so um, if we just do these steps that I do with my clients on this dimension mm. as an example. So first you need to know where you are. Mm -hmm. Raise your self-awareness, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, do I have the orientation and the preference to communicate directly or indirectly? Mm -hmm. That's uh, the first step. Mm -hmm. Then you need to see, oh, okay, there's somebody who's completely different from me. Yeah. Okay, that exists. So my natural tendency is not, not just natural and God-given and right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Something else exists. Mm -hmm. um, and then you need to evaluate, okay, what do they want? What's the positive intention behind that? Mm. And what we say as intercultural trainers is that direct communicators, they value the clarity of the message. Mm. And they do that even if they might hurt their counterpart. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Whereas the indirect communicators, they value the relationship slightly mm. more. And so at the expense of not being very clear and understood, mm. like you just said, mm -hmm. um, they, um, they, they prefer to, to, to safeguard and protect the relationship. Mm. So they yeah. might, you know, be very indirect because of that. And then as soon as we understand those intentions behind there, mm. we, we can more easily say, oh, it can't be all bad then. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and so if I'm the direct communicator and I realize, mm -hmm. okay, my clients or my partners, my colleagues are all more in the indirect case, I then need to work, get coached, get How trained, work adapt? on myself <laughs> to be able to shift on that line whenever it's necessary. I don't have to mm -hmm. throw it on overboard completely. In some cases, it might still be better to be a direct communicator. In mm -hmm. some places, I might, might just have to warn the others. By the way, I'm going into direct mode. Don't be offended, right? <laughs> exactly. Okay. Yeah. But, you know, design your communication and your behavior around this new knowledge. And so but these guess, dimensions exist. Mm -hmm. There are many of them. Um, you mentioned in, in your example mm -hmm. of that Spanish um, mm -hmm. encounter that was a very effective communicator who put a lot of drama mm -hmm. and emphasis, mm -hmm. probably a lot of, lots of gestures yeah. into communication, whereas British people are more on the neutral side. They like yeah. to control the emotions, slow down the pace. So that's just another example. And there are many of them. Um, yeah. And I guess as well, just to help the people watching, I'm sure they'll be as, as I am really interested to even start understanding, because as you said, Toba 17 dimension, but this dimension on its own is very clear. And mm -hmm. it's already something that's, you know, the ideas that germ uh, the, um, coming up in our minds on what do we need to do? Now, I'm sure you probably get that question quite a lot. And if I wanted to find out more about culture dimension, and especially these aspects of looking at different countries and the type of what is the type of communication, of course, with the caveat mm -hmm. that you need mm -hmm. to look at the uniqueness of the person rather than just the stereotypes. 
But is there, do you have any, uh, any kind of uh, documentation or links either on your website yeah, or you can yeah. share with us on the show notes or something? Of course. So if you're interested in country profiles uh, mm -hmm. and you want to research that on the internet, um, there is Hofstede Insights that you can go mm -hmm. to and you can basically pull out any um, cu country profile, but just around six main dimensions. Mm. And if you're interested in raising your self-awareness, so doing that first step that I do mm. with my clients, then you could go um, and do the cultural orientations framework test mm. that uh, Philip Rosinski proposes on his website. And I will link, put those links yes. down below in the description box so you can find them again. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. And obviously, if you guys are enjoying it so far, don't forget to subscribe and like our channel so that you know when yes. more of this lovely <laughs> conversation are happening. Sadly, again, it's another amazing topic and we get into towards the end, really, really close to the end. Yes. But I don't yes. think that we can leave our viewers without addressing the questions that really drove us to running this particular session. Mm -hmm. Personality types, culture differences, there are some commonalities, but they are also very different in the way that they, yeah. are, they address the way things work. So which one do we go for? And you know, that's, when, that's you really a I get a lot. Time, <laughs> when you meet someone for the first time, what do you use in terms of improving the communication with them? Are you going to default to personality or to culture difference? Yeah, yeah, that is really the question, right? When you discuss these two topics, I would say ideally you really know your stuff in both areas because they intersect, they don't cancel each other out. People <laughs> remain people in each culture and people have different personality types in each culture. And what is interesting is that uh, everything is relative. Yeah. So a Spanish introvert and a Spanish extrovert will both be different mm. to a British introvert and a British <laughs> extrovert, you know? So um, it is, for me, it is necessary in order to really understand somebody to have a communication about both aspects, culture and personality type. Yeah. Um, what I, do you think, Nelly? <laughs> no, I definitely, I definitely agree. I think when you first meet the person, it might not always be easy because, uh, as you said, right? So if you take an extroverted person in Spain, the, actually an introverted person in Spain will, will always look more extroverted in, in the UK because yeah. in Spain as well, they are very close to each other. The way they sit very close to each other, they, you know, yeah. they tend to touch people, obviously, you know, respectively. <laughs> and, um, and obviously, and then you, you train the mix, for example, an extroverted person in Japan and an extroverted person in the UK, they will also look very mm -hmm. different. So, yeah. but at the same time, it's kind of having an awareness of that and starting, especially, mm -hmm. In the courses that I do on my online courses, course on personality types, then you can start thinking about, you know, meetings, how people uh, interact during meetings, emails, how people write emails, and the small clues that you can get. But the best one, as uh, Eva and I have discussed so many times since the first uh, video, talk about it. Don't make it taboo to talk about personality types or culture difference, because that is what will really help you as a team to enrich it. So don't just run your profile or run your profile from by recruitment team and just leave it at that. Once you know what your profile is, discuss it with the team so that we know where, where we are as well. Yes, so that I agree. That really gets us to the end of the session. And mm -hmm. I'm already excited. And right now my own stereotypes are coming up and I was like, yes, okay. So now at the end, I'm just going to close. But I remember that Eva, you're hosting this session. So I'll, I'll, I'll pass the floor to you uh, to kind of yes. let our, our people know what's going to happen next. You know, my reds is already directing and what are you going to do next? I'm like, no, yes. patient, I'm going to wait. <laughs> so now the green personality type also gets her saying <laughs> exactly <laughs> <laughs> so but like Nelly said don't forget to subscribe please please follow us if you have any questions we're always happy to answer them directly and get into a conversation with you and help you design your conversations in your workplace um, next video we will speak about using empathy to um, make your remote teams work together much better and much more smoothly and we're already looking forward to that thank you for watching thank you